All right, do we think we can get through this whole video without crying? Probably not. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to it if this is the first time you are seeing my face. Thank you for clicking on it. My name is JC and I have a huge life update for you guys. Now clearly you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title and you know what this is about, but there's a, a surprise at the end of this because not only am I quitting my job, but it's because I'm going to be making a radical career change. Now, I goofed hardcore and I actually posted a member vlog and it was set to publicly viewable instead of just viewable for my members. So if you guys aren't aware, YouTube launched this new thing called memberships, which is basically a ripoff of Patreon, but directly in the platform. If you guys are interested, I'll leave a link below if you wanna join as a member. But basically you pay like five bucks a month and you get exclusive content from creators like myself. So I recently launched it and I have been doing vlogs through my membership channel and they're kind of just highlights from two weeks worth of content essentially. So it's not just me like sitting down in my apartment chit chatting, that's a lie, I do a lot of that. But it's more of like what I'm up to in LA. But in that video, I kind of wanted to give a behind the scenes and an exclusive look into this new endeavor. And then I accidentally posted it for everyone to see. So about like 50 of you guys already know the punchline. Uh, so well done, well done on being early, but that is now set to member only view. So if you're, again, if you're interested, check that out. No pressure by any means, but just kind of funny there. But because I am a story time channel, I will be telling this in a story time format. So I will be going chronologically. So even though you know the punchline, just wait. So if you like videos like this, story times, hanging out with me and following my life here in Los Angeles, make sure to like this video. It really helps me out and subscribe if you wanna join for future videos. Again, no pressure, but I'd like for you to come back and join me. But let's just get into why I'm quitting my job and what my next step will be. So first let's get into the background of my job. I am a marketing project manager for a community college and I've worked there now for coming up on five years. When I first started, I was just a social media specialist and I was able to work my way up to second in charge in the whole department, which is super awesome. So I have always loved and still love my job for a variety of reasons, but one of the main reasons is its flexibility. So with my current position, I'm actually a contracted freelance worker. I'm not a direct employee of the community college. So because I am contracted, I'm basically my own boss and my own business, which means I get to make my own hours. And that has been so spoiling because I truly don't think I could ever work a job again where I have to work a nine to five set hours, clock in, clock out, and not just be able to take as much time off as I needed. So because I was offered this flexibility these past few years, I would be able to take trips with friends and just not work on Friday or Monday. But because I didn't have to clock in or out, I could make up those hours on the other days of the week. So I wouldn't lose hours, I would still get paid the same amount, but I could work a three or four day work week and kind of take days off here and there. Or if I just wanted to be completely off the grid, not make up those hours, I didn't have to do any paperwork in terms of time off or vacation time. I would just not invoice for those hours and just take a pay cut. And it was so nice because I always felt like I was in control of my own life and what I was up to and that I was my own boss. So again, it's very spoiling because I just, I, I require that with any kind of job moving forward. I also have loved my job because I have loved the people I've worked with. I've become really great friends with all of them. In terms of my actual work roles, it was a very, very creative job, which I loved. I worked with the social media teams, website, photo and video development, as well as a lot of hands-on creative projects. So I was able to brainstorm and coordinate these really interesting and innovative projects. And it was like I was doing something different every single week, which was really interesting to me. It was a very like fast-paced kind of environment. And so I liked that it wasn't just clocking in, do the same things every day and then clock out and it was just very mundane. So I like that it was it was something different all the time within the same scope of my roles. I say this because I have always loved my job, but things have started to change in the past couple of years. And a big part of that was because of the pandemic. So when COVID hit, our campus closed and we could no longer work in the office. So before where I was surrounded by my amazing coworkers, it became a very virtual format. During this time, we realized our entire marketing department could function completely remotely. There was no reason 
nearly any of us needed to be on campus with the exception of like the photo and social media team. So that's when I picked up and I moved to LA. And because again, I'm my own boss, I said, sorry, I can only work remotely. I'll barely be on campus ever again. And they just kind of had to deal with that. So working from home was awesome because I felt more efficient. I felt like I was getting more stuff done and in a quicker fashion to where I could pursue YouTube and I could pursue becoming an influencer. But what I was missing was that in-person element and kind of the passion for my job. It just started to feel like a job instead of a career. So what I mean by that is this past December, I did have to go back to campus for the super big photo project where I had to coordinate with several different department leads and we were gonna go into their classrooms and photograph students for this campaign. So during this time, I went to these professors and as our photographers taking photos, I was talking to these professors and it was incredible of how passionate they were. They were like, we need to get this campaign going because we need students to come in here. We need them to know we have state-of-the-art equipment, that we have faculty that's really gonna help them reach their goals. My biggest goal in life is to inspire somebody to become a welder, to become a baker, to go into refrigeration and HVAC. And I'd be talking to these professors and they live and breathe their field, their career field. And they were so passionate about helping students, about eliminating equity issues, about helping students transfer to universities or become the top in their fields. And I didn't have that passion. I was never that passionate about education. It was kind of just a social media job that I got and stayed with. And so I kind of started to feel bad that like, oh, I just work from home making posters and sending emails to students. I'm not really <laughs> boots on the ground helping students reach their academic goals. So it kind of started to really like make me think about if this is a career I wanna stay in for the long term. And then because of that, combined with another other like mental health issues I was having, I began to really resent my job. I would wake up, open my email, see 50 new emails and just be like, ugh, and close my laptop because I would get so overwhelmed by just the simplest tasks. And that fast paced environment that I once previously loved where it was something different every week all of a sudden started to feel very overwhelming where they'd be like, hey, we're looking into getting into VR. Can you do some research? Or, hey, we need this new complete brochure made. Can you write it up and get a designer on it? And so I just started to feel like, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to. I want to make YouTube videos. I want to go out and create content for Instagram. I want to be a content creator. And this, <laughs> my job was getting in the way, which is so silly, but I was really starting to feel the effects of burnout. And a big part of that was, I kind of stopped seeing the growth in my position of where my job could take me. And I kind of realized, you know what? Education is not my passion. This is not the career or field I want to go into. <laughs> but the, the thing that's even harder than just doing my regular work is it's really a part-time job updating resumes, updating my portfolio, you know, honing in on some of my interviewing skills and doing my research in terms of other companies I want to work for and applying for jobs. And so then I got even more overwhelmed because I was like, oh my God, I don't even want to apply for other jobs because I had friends and family members who were going through like five steps of interview processes to not even get jobs. They were literally doing tests and assessment quizzes and 17 rounds of interviews to not get jobs. And so I was like, I don't wanna do that. Like, what the heck am I gonna do with my life? Like, I just don't know if I should stick it out, if I should start applying for new jobs, what I should do. So what I decided was I was going to wait until summertime to stay with my job, figure out what I wanted my next steps to be. And then in the summertime, I will officially quit and hopefully by then get a new job. But then I really was like, you know, I think I need to leave this job sooner rather than later because if I stay until June, I'm just gonna be so extremely burnt out, so extremely unhappy, and I will have wasted six months. So that's when I kind of did something different. <laughs> so, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know, here and there, I've been doing these little modeling and acting gigs. I kind of do those completely on my own, unrepresented, and through sites like Backstage or Casting Networks where you pay a subscription fee to access kind of like the Indeed for the entertainment industry. So after a year of doing that, I kind of had a decent portfolio built up and I was ready to start applying for talent or modeling agencies. The biggest thing that was holding me back was my body. I have a lot of body insecurities and in my head I was like, I can't apply to be a model until I lose these last 15 pounds or I can't be a model until I really hone in on my body and be the perfect representation of what they might be looking for. But then in January I was like, you know what? 
I've been saying that for three years now that I need to lose these last 15 pounds. It's not happening. Let's just start applying to these modeling and talent agencies and just see what happens. Let's see what kind of information I can get. So I did my research. I looked up some of the modeling and talent agencies within the LA area that I would be interested in having represent me. And I just went for it. I emailed 12 agencies and I said, hi, my name is JC. I have done a dozen gigs this past year, completely unrepresented that range from clients from this client to this client. Here are my headshots. I'm interested in print and commercial modeling. Like I'd love to meet up and see if we could be a good fit for representation. So I was following like an online template, just saying what they told me to say in terms of, you know, my own credits, as well as just getting straight to the point of like, let's meet and see if it's going to work. So I wasn't really expecting anything because as I was researching how to contact these talent agencies, all of the articles were like, hey, don't get discouraged when everybody turns you down. You just need to keep trying and eventually one will say yes. So that's the mindset that I had that, hey, this is part of the process of seeing if I have a future in the entertainment industry and seeing if this is a real possibility for me. So I sent out those 12 emails, not really expecting much. And this is the part I cry, I don't, dang it. I cry every time on this part. And I did it in my, my member vlog too. Um, but I heard back from all 12 agencies and they were all interested in signing me. <laughs> and that was so crazy. I was with my mom and I just was crying and I was like, mom, I'm gonna cry. Like I got essentially 12 offers from talent agencies who wanted to sign me. And it was weirdly the most validating thing ever because all of the agencies, we're like, wow, that's incredible. You've done so much work. You have such a look that we're looking for. You're very marketable. You have some an amazing resume in terms of being completely unrepresented. And none of them asked about my body. None of them were interested in, hey, can you send me a full size shot? Or, hey, what does the rest of you look like? Or anything of that sort. Because all of these people in terms of the entertainment industry, they all want real bodies. They want real people and real personalities. And the biggest thing that was holding me back was a non-factor in all of it. Not only that, but it was just the most incredibly validating feeling in the sense of, I don't know, is this a possibility or am I just doing this as a fun side hobby? You know, like, yeah, I'll go be on a music video, but do I have a career in the enter entertainment industry? Probably not. But that was just kind of proof that this was something I could pursue and that people would be interested in it and that I could make a career out of it. <laughs> so I had my first interview with a modeling agency and I was very underprepared. She was asking me questions that I just, I was such a naive rookie. She was like, so are you union or non-union? And I was like, I don't, I don't think I've ever joined a union, so I must be non-union. You know, just silly things in terms of like technicality and terminology. That was really funny. But after that interview, I was talking to this agent and she was so helpful in letting me know how this whole process works. And she was like, no, when an agency reaches out to you, that means they're gonna give you an offer. It's just a matter of you interviewing them and you seeing if it's a good fit. So she said, go take your other interviews. Here are questions you should ask. Here's what you should look for. And you really need to find the best fit for you. So I'm really grateful for that. And then came a few days of just intense research of what should I be asking in these interviews? What should I be looking for in a modeling agency? What should I be looking for in terms of red flags for a contract or any kind of commission fees? Um, so that's where I've been in case you've noticed I haven't, if you're watching this in real time, I haven't posted in two weeks because I've been busy just figuring out like everything there is to know within the modeling industry because I had no idea. I kind of just applied on a whim and was getting results that I was like, oh shoot, if this is the next step, I should probably actually look into it. So again, if you're interested in seeing more of the behind the scenes of this whole process, definitely go check out that vlog. But essentially I narrowed it down to my top six agencies. So I had 12 offers. I didn't wanna interview all 12 if I knew these six weren't even gonna be the best fit. One of the reasons for that was some of the offers I was getting was across the board. So what across the board means is that each agency has different departments and that might be print modeling where it's just photos. It might be commercial modeling, which involves some level of acting and video work. There's also runway. There's also influencer divisions. There's also live modeling where you're essentially a live mannequin and they can work with real bodies to design clothes on you. There's trade shows and hosting gigs. So a lot of different types of modeling and talent departments. So I was getting 
some offers where they're like, hey, we'd love to offer you just a print contract. And it's like, well, already I'm gonna eliminate you because I got an across the board offer over here and that's more important to me. So I was interviewing with these agencies and it came down to two. And this is something I didn't really touch on in my vlog, but the two were a smaller boutique agency where they had a really small staff. They kind of went for the smaller gigs. And then there was a big agency. So I had a meeting set up with one of the largest talent agencies in LA. And I was super stoked because every article that I would read would be like top 10 agencies in LA and they were on there and I was about to get an offer. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is my big break. This is my chance. What I learned was that if I were to go with the bigger agency, I would essentially be working for a month just auditioning, 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 and probably not getting anything. But maybe once a month, I'll get a Taco Bell campaign or a Walmart or CVS campaign, and it will be a big payout. But then it would start over where you're just auditioning, 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 not getting anything for perhaps months, and then you'll get that big payout. And it'll be a very prestigious, very high-end campaign. Whereas with this one, they're not going for the Taco Bell and Walmart commercials. No, no, no. They're going for smaller direct bookings to where you kind of consistently have work, but it's not some giant campaign where I'm gonna see my face in Ulta necessarily. And so I really had to decide, do I wanna be a small fish in a big pond and have that name notoriety? Or would I like to be a big fish in a small pond and really hone my craft? So I reached out to one of my acting friends. So about a year ago, I did this pilot presentation, which is kind of like a prequel to a TV show to get funding for it. And I was cast in that, which was super incredible. And the woman who played my mother-in-law, we ended up following each other on Instagram and we're commenting on each other's things a lot. And she's really been my mentor throughout this whole process because just watching her and how her life has unfolded in the entertainment industry as an older actress has been very inspiring. So I messaged her and I was like, hey, I need some advice. If I'm getting offers from talent agencies, should I go for the big agency that really has the prestige or the smaller agency that's kind of unknown that a lot of people, you know, maybe have heard of, but it's not as, I guess, prestigious is the word. She said, well, honestly, I signed with a boutique agency seven years ago and I haven't left them because I prefer to be the small fish in the big pond. I prefer the more hands-on approach and I have a much better time getting consistent work and meeting new people rather than constantly auditioning on my own and maybe not booking as many gigs. She was like, it's not so much about the money, it's about the craft and the actual art of it. And I just find that a lot more inspiring. And so I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I really appreciate your insight on that. And then I looked and I said, hey, your talent agency is the one I have an interview with tomorrow. Like, that's crazy. I'll let you know how it goes. I take that interview and I totally understood what she was saying. It felt like a family there. I was immediately getting incredible vibes. And it really felt like, you know what? I might not be on a billboard for Target, but I could see myself learning the industry through this talent agency. I could really see myself exploring all those different departments and really figure out within a year where I wanted to take my entertainment career. So as of this week, I am a signed model with Brand Modeling and Talent Agency. I am so stoked. They're actually based out of Orange County, so I will have a lot of work to do in Orange County. I probably won't be working for a little bit longer because there's still a bit of a process in getting set up through their agency and starting to submit for gigs. Most importantly is that I will continue to be my own boss. I am a contracted model through them. So if I will be taking a trip, which I do have several trips coming up, I can say, hey, book me out for these days. I am blacked out, not like, not like drinking, but like on my calendar but also probably drinking, let's not talk about that. But I'm unavailable to work these days, so there's still that flexibility that I'm looking for, and there's still that le level of ownership in terms of my own schedule and what I would be interested in, in terms of taking bookings when I'm available and what kind of jobs I would wanna book. Another thing I'm super excited for is that it will probably give me more flexibility in pursuing YouTube and content creation. I let them know that, hey, I am gonna be dedicated to YouTube and all these social media type of platforms. Is that something you could help me with in the future? Is that gonna be an issue? And they encouraged me. They said, no, use your personality to further yourself in the entertainment industry. It's only gonna benefit you. But because I've been using YouTube as such a creative hobby for so long, they again were very validating in the sense of, no, we've seen your channel. We think you should absolutely pursue it and put your whole heart into it. So it's been a big, time but also mental factor of why I haven't been able to put all my time into YouTube with my other job that hopefully with this I will feel the need to 
to put on makeup and turn on my camera and actually film for you guys and have that time to set up a content calendar and figure out what I want to post all of the time. So I'm really hoping that this new gig will allow me the flexibility and freedom to continue to pursue this because I do love this aspect of a future career as well. One of the biggest unknowns is how much money I will actually be making. So because I signed a contract, I don't actually make money. What it means is that the agent is now in charge of finding me jobs and then they take a cut of any job that I get. So essentially as much as I'm working is as much as they're getting paid. So that's why they work for their models. But it's a terrifying thought because there just might not be any jobs out there. People might not want my look or maybe I'm just auditioning but not actually landing any kind of roles. Or, you know, there could be another lockdown where I can't be doing any type of modeling or acting gigs. And so I might have to take a pay cut. So I was talking to my dad about it and he was like, hey, like this is kind of a risk because it's essentially like if people who move to LA to become actors where unless they have a lot of savings or some other type of side job like waitressing or working at a coffee shop, they might not be financially secure. And so that is one of my concerns, which is why I also want to continue to put my all into YouTube so that I don't have to go back to serving although uh, I do like making serving story times, but you know, that's the goal is that I don't know how much money I'm gonna be making. It's all on a case by case, job by job factor. So I am financially okay in terms of savings, but just wanted to put that out there that I probably, I don't know how it will affect you guys. I don't know why I'm saying this, but it's more of like, I gotta lay low on my lifestyle and not be going to, to concerts and hundred dollar dinners anymore for a hot minute. So just something else to know. So the next step was telling my job. I called my boss and I said, hey, I have good news and bad news. Bad news is that I really need to start cutting back on my role. Good news is that I'm gonna be a model. <laughs> my boss was so incredibly supportive. He was ecstatic for me. And again, I'm so grateful by the people who I've surrounded myself with at work in how excited they all were for me, which was such a great feeling. Uh, but so the, how it will work with my current job is I told them, hey, I am immediately gonna cut to part-time because I want to dedicate all my availability to these modeling gigs. I don't want to turn down a job because I have a Zoom meeting type of thing. And so I let them know, you are no longer my priority. This is my priority. However, I am still able to work with you guys through June. So that was always my goal was I never wanted to leave them hanging in the middle of a semester because it's kind of like crunch time this time of year in terms of graduations and other end of the year events that that is such a huge part of my role that I didn't want to be like, <laughs> good luck, figure it out because I still have a lot of loyalty to my job and my coworkers. I didn't want to dump it all on them. So I will be quitting my job, but I have given them through the end of the semester to find my replacements, to start transitioning out of my role. And I did offer that I can stay on just to train people and let them know how to do certain things. But June will probably be my heart out. So I didn't officially like be like, bye, see you never again, delete my email. I am transitioning out of my job and slowly decreasing my hours over time. So I am part time and by the end of June, I guess I'll just be a model, no longer a marketing manager, which is just insane to say. So once I had that conversation with my boss, the fear started to set in a little bit. And I kind of touched on it in the sense of financial security in terms of, wait, should I be quitting my full-time job for a modeling agency that I might be only making like 300 bucks per week? Am I making the wrong decision? And then a little bit of imposter syndrome started to set in where if you guys also saw that vlog, I did a modeling gig where I didn't do that well. I kind of let down the person who I was modeling for where she didn't get that much content out of me and I just wasn't a very good model essentially. So I got really defeated in the sense of, they shouldn't have signed me. I made a mistake, I can't actually do this. I'm an imposter just because I have pretty eyes and curly hair doesn't mean I can actually fulfill a brief in terms of some type of creative campaign or some type of photography shoot or video commercial. So I started to get really down on myself and really worried that I'm making a terrible, terrible decision. And then the universe works in mysterious ways because I get a phone call. I don't know how much I can say, so I won't get into the specifics of it all, <laughs> but essentially somebody had seen my photos on the internet. They then got rerouted to my YouTube. They watched my YouTube channel and they offered me a part in a movie. <laughs> And it's a speaking role. And again, that was the validation that I needed that you can do this. And this is something that you can pursue. And I'm just, I'm really grateful. 
I'm just really grateful for the all, all the opportunities that have been presented to me. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I think I was getting imposter syndrome so much that I really needed that to know that I do have a future in this. And I don't know if it's going to be acting, if it's going to be modeling or more personality driven type of work, but I think the universe was just telling me, you need to go for it. Even if you're not making that much money, this is the right path for you. So the movie I will be in, it's called Mississippi Scholar. Um, I'm not a huge Facebooker, but if you guys are on Facebook, please check it out. Go like the page so you can follow any kind of updates and anything there. It's a small indie film that will be filming in Mississippi later this year. So I'm so, so impossibly incredibly grateful to be given the opportunity to be in a freaking movie, you guys. Like, I mean, sure, it's an indie film and it's on the smaller scale, but you guys, I'm going to be working with some incredible talent, some incredible people who are so passionate about their craft. I get to learn behind the scenes of how a freaking movie is made, and I really get a kickstart into this whole entertainment industry and career just by having this small speaking role. So you guys, <laughs> you have no idea how, how grateful I am for this opportunity and how I will not be taking it for granted, as you can tell. <laughs> So again, Mississippi Scholar, I don't know when it's gonna come out, but if you are interested, go like that Facebook page um, just to kind of follow along in that process. And I don't know how much I can share on here, so that's kind of all I'll say about it for right now, but just really exciting stuff. So I didn't get through it without crying. For all the people who ask about astrology, I'm not super into astrology, but I'm on the cusp of Leo and Cancer, and I'm told that I cry a lot because I'm also part Cancer, so I don't know, take with that what you want, but I cry a lot. But I'm just so excited for this new opportunity. I am so grateful for each and every one of you for following me along in this journey and over the past year and a half, encouraging me to continue to keep up with my YouTube channel because YouTube has been pivotal in terms of acting as a portfolio or a reel for me. You know, I was able to get auditions, get interviews, get talent agency offers because they could go into my YouTube and see my personality and see how I interact on camera. And so, I'm just so grateful that you guys have continued to uplift me and support me and continue to watch these videos because otherwise I wouldn't keep making them. So I've said it before in the other vlog, but hopefully, you know, if you like me and this content that maybe if I'm on more of a modeling topic that you won't lose any kind of interest because um, it'll be a next new fun adventure. But like I said, I really hope to be able to have more time to dedicate to YouTube and content creation with this new career endeavor. So keep an eye out for more videos. You know, I still have a lot of things to do with paperwork wise getting set up with the agency. So maybe not for like a couple more days. I don't know, but I am just so grateful for everything, for this opportunity, for you guys, and to see where this journey takes me. So that's gonna be it for this video. I thank you guys so, so much for watching, for supporting me. Like I've said a million times before, just thank you in general. If you wanna follow along in my life, maybe some more behind the scenes footage of doing some type of modeling gigs or seeing what I'm up to in my real life, make sure you guys are following me on social media. I am on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Twitter is like just my random thoughts. Instagram's my face. TikTok is just me breaking down mentally. Maybe don't follow me there. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Toodles! Can you see my bun? You'd think if I was doing a whole video about me becoming a model, I would have like done my hair or makeup better to like prove that my face is marketable. <laughs> but no, you guys get a dirty bun today. <laughs> Enjoy.